getting started. Uh, we're very happy to be here. My name is Michael D'Aloya. I'm the Senior Executive for Technology Development for the City of Cleveland. And I'll blame the city's technology and why we're so late today. Um, today we're going to be talking about investing in the creative class. In the last two and a half years, it's been my charge to bring as many technology companies and as many people involved in the creative class into the city of Cleveland. And what I think we're going to do today, I think, one, you'll be surprised at how much we've accomplished in a short period of time, and that you should consider Cleveland as your base of operations and your home. Today we're going to accomplish three things. So first, I'm going to demonstrate to you how deep the technology sector is in Northeast Ohio, including Cleveland, Ohio, the strategy that the city has employed, and the third thing being we're going to show you all the buzz that we've created in the last two and a half years. In a very recent study, we found out there are 2,800 technology companies in Northeast Ohio. And to give you an indication of the power of that number, that 2,800 is more than the number of technology companies in Reston, Texas, or Reston, Virginia, more than Austin, Texas, more than a research triangle. My only concern is they're very geographically dispersed, but nonetheless, we've got a base of 2,800 tech companies in Northeast Ohio. Employs almost 8% of the total employable population in Northeast Ohio. And in a recent statistic by uh, Nortech, we have 11,000 jobs in Northeast Ohio unfilled at this point in time in the technology trades, 5,000 of which are in Cuyahoga County. It's the second fastest industry growing, uh, growing industry segment in Northeast Ohio, right behind healthcare. You've got a really interesting convergent between those two, and we'll get to that in a minute. But look at all the deep knowledge that we have, or rather, great. <laughs> Again, uh, city technology. I don't think this thing's been used in a few years. But with that said, <laughs> deep knowledge in software development, medical devices, biotech, MEMS, fuel cells, search engine optimization, satellite system. Uh, who knew that the second largest satellite compression software company in the world, and that, that is indeed a niche, is right on Prospect Avenue, where a bunch of NASA engineers left a few years ago. And there's very few satellites that go up today that don't have their satellite compression software in it. Disaster recovery and disaster management and managed security, the last bullet point there. This is a very interesting bullet point. When you walk down Euclid Avenue, or rather the next time that you're able to walk down Euclid Avenue, what you'll find is that the world's the largest fiber pipe between New York and Chicago is underneath Euclid Avenue. And off of that fiber pipe, I've got multiple data centers, multiple network, network operating centers, multiple VoIP providers, multiple network security providers all within a four block area. And so we've been using that infrastructure as an incentive for software companies, web development companies to move downtown. Do I have some concerns? Well, of course we do have concerns. We don't have a Microsoft or a Dell to really be the cement, that, that anchor that we have. We're geographically dispersed over multiple county area. Um, I would put up our management and technical talent against anybody in the world. I really would. The problem is we just don't have enough of it. I mean, very evident by we're 11,000 people short. Continuum of capital. Prior to joining the city, I was a, a CFO of a tech company right on Euclid Avenue, one of those data centers that I mentioned before. We raised in the range of $3.5 million from private equity sources. There wasn't a bank in town that would give me a line of credit for my day-to-day -day operations. So we had to go to the West Coast to get that from us, Silicon Valley Bank and Cisco Capital, which talks about the short-term liquidity. There's just not enough liquidity in the marketplace in, in terms of financial liquidity to really uh, jumpstart the account, this particular industry segment. However, since the third frontier was created in 2002, the city of Cleveland's been the largest recipient of those dollars to the tune of just a shade under $300 million, mostly into the research environments of Case, the clinic, and university hospitals. But also, since 1997, for the last 10 years, there have been a number of private equity funds that have raised in the tune of $125 million, again, devoted to, to Northeast Ohio and devoted to technology. Now, I don't know what exactly is going to happen with that $425 million, but you'd like to think that something great is going to occur. And I just don't know what that's going to be yet. And yet we're still, according to a Nortec study, $1 billion short. And just the companies we have, that 2,800 companies, there's 11,000 people who are short, we're still short a billion dollars to really jumpstart this uh, technology economy. So what's the vision? Mayor Jackson recently released his economic development plan for the city and his 2020 vision. And bullet point number one, bullet point number one, and this was a huge debate internally, I can assure you, was that the mayor wants 
the city to be a leader in technology, in biotechnology by 2020. Historically, we would have fought with that issue of we're a manufacturing town and we will forever be a manufacturing town. But again, the last two and a half years, we've moved 32 tech companies into the city. I'm not quite aware of 32 manufacturing companies were moving into the city. So there's been a dramatic mind change at City Hall about what we can do. Two, we're going to aggregate as much financial capital and human capital into the Cleveland marketplace to the point where the city, I help manage an economic development fund for the city, and we've deployed $5 million into the technology trades and projects. And we're also going to create a spectrum of entrepreneurial education from grade school to grad school to the point where in the next few weeks we're actually convening a meeting between the Cleveland Municipal School Board, Cuyahoga County, City of Cleveland. We're talking about implementing a certification education program from K through 8 and 9 through 12. So when you walk out of the Cleveland Municipal Schools at some point in time, you'll have a series of technology certifications. You can either go to school or you can jump out into the employment marketplace. So you'll have that choice. And the fact that uh, everyone's agreed to this meeting is a pretty monumental step. These are just some of the companies in the last two and a half years that we have moved in. And it's 32 companies. It's a shade under 900 new jobs. They're growing by 20, 25 percent a year. It's been a really exciting time to see this happen and occur in the city. So when we collect all the creative class into the city, where the hell are we going to put everybody? And uh, I'm sure you're quite aware that one thing that I do have in Cleveland, Ohio, is a lot of freaking space. <laughs> and if you need space, we can find the space for you. But the first thing, and this was the catalyst for technology in, in downtown Cleveland. Amazingly, it wasn't that fiber pipe that we have underneath it. But an old building called, uh, this was actually the old Stouffer's headquarters, Stouffer's Foods headquarters right on Euclid Avenue. It's now the Idea Center. You've got WCPN, WVIZ in the first two floors, five technology companies above it. It's got a data center. This alone, I mean, I'll be honest with you, when I started my job, all these tech companies in my portfolio, I was asking, where can we find the space? And there wasn't one damn landlord in the city that would let me bring these tech companies in. Now these are dot bombs, the technology crash in the marketplace. And I, and I got to say, Playhouse Square was the only landlord that would let me bring tech companies in to the point where I had to convince them, just give me a floor, man, one floor. What's a floor to you? I can fill it. Well, two and a half floors later, we're now we're moving into the Bulkley building. We've established the E-Tech Hatchery, which I'll show you in a minute. We're about to launch the Hanna Tech Hotel. We've got Tyler Elevator going on, new buildings on West 9th and the Cleveland Technology Center, all in two and a half years. So there is, in fact, a demand. If you're a startup company, you want to test out an idea or a business plan, E-Tech Hatchery, 600 square feet, 300 bucks a month, includes your furniture, your fixtures, your connectivity. We even have a few old, uh, older computers in there. All your level one support, your email, servers, it's all included in that base price. It's a six-month contract, and we're going to ask you to graduate at some point in time, hopefully within that six months. And today we've had Portfolio Magazine Online, Cleveland365.com, and uh, City Pro all be a part of the E-Tech Hatchery. We've actually rebranded the hatchery, so if you walk on Euclid and 13th, you'll see the new signs. There's also a crown on top of the building. We're going to put in some, hopefully, some new digital signage on the crown in the next few weeks. Cleveland Technology Center. This is for the large application user, either through a Web 2.0 application, network security application, uh, where you'll be doing load testing on the Internet. This building actually exists in a, in a very uh, dilapidated state on East 12th, between East 12th and East 13th on Rockwell Avenue. And if you go down there today, you'll see a lot of development of the Avenue District, which is a $250 million development of housing around this building. It's actually a collection of four buildings. And we all agree it's the ugliest collection of four buildings on the planet. It really looks horrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear down the first building, redo the other three, and it'll be a large-scale application center. So if you're looking for high power, this building will never, I mean, it'll never go down. There's, there's nine megawatts of electricity going through it, four major fiber carriers connected into the building in its current configuration. We're just going to add on this new building. And this is going to be a $45 million development in conjunction with the Avenue District. Again, live, work, and play. I want you downtown, but I want you to live downtown, I want you to work downtown, and I want you to play downtown. And this is going to help us do that. Uh, for all the gaming enthusiasts in town, after doing some research at uh, Case and the Cleveland Institute of Art, we found out that there's a gaming minor, uh, a gaming theory minor in, the, in that university. 
And 75% of those graduates were going out to other software or gaming companies outside the city, which is uh, just inexcusable. And you might have heard of two of them. One is uh, Microsoft, the other one is EA Games. So we're planning this. This is a $5 million development called the Game Hub, 16,000 square foot uh, facility. And it has, I don't know if you can see it in the back, but in the very back you'll see a two-tiered incubator. And the rest of this says every platform that you could play, Wii, PlayStation 3, um, the Xbox, they'll all be resident in the entertainment component, which is in the front. And in the back, again, very inexpensive space. Every software tool needed for gaming will be at your disposal. If you create the games, you need to beta test the games, you can test them up in the front. We're hoping to get national gaming tournaments. It's taken me a year and a half, and we just got a developer to the table last week, and I'm hoping that this breaks and we'll start putting in. The city has agreed to put half a million dollars into this $5 million project. The next thing is a sister concept that the city created, which is called the Ultra Hip Music Lounge. And uh, as you can see, some very interesting architectural elements of uh, uh, videos being displayed on the walls. There's a huge guitar carved out of the ceiling that matches a bar underneath it. And you'll see a lot of these stations in the foreground. It's actually a stage in the back, and here's the idea, the concept is there's a lot of musicians who are part of the creative class. They may be technologists, maybe not, but the point is, you have a band, come in and play three songs, or five. Just secure the stage time, and it's yours. It's recorded digitally in an audio and video format. I may miss you play, but two weeks later I come in, I see what you did, and I can download it for 99 cents for the audio, a buck 99 for the video. And we share in that uh, the... Uh, Music Lounge and the artist would then share in those revenue proceeds. Stage, a digital studio, and again, that live, work, and play environment. So I'm hoping within the next 12 to 14 months, we'll have both of these concepts at least started. Uh, we've got a building identified on Superior. We think this could be a huge destination for people. Other things to, to contemplate, Hannah Tech Hotel. We're launching this in the spring of 2007. Looks like it'll be done in late May. Again, these are work pods, 500 to 1,500 square feet. Everything's included, your furniture, your uh, telephone system, your fax, your copier. All you have to do is really just show up and start working on your new company. And it's between $1.25 to $1.50 a square foot each month, one-year leases. You know, one of the problems we've had is we had a lot of great number of startups happening in Cleveland didn't have any place to put them, and when we did find a place, it was usually a three to five year lease, and if you're a startup, you certainly don't want that type of liability. So here's a venue for a one year lease. Superior Innovation Center would be very similar in construct with the, with the exception of these are typically patents, medical devices, biotechnology, and we're gonna put it at 815 Superior. Tyler Elevator, I'm not sure if you know where Tyler Elevator, that uh, complex would be, but it's on 36 in Superior. It's a 42 building complex that stretches two city blocks. Gorgeous architecture. And uh, Digino, which was a software development company out of uh, Beachwood, moved into that facility. And this is a great story about Cleveland, right? They doubled their space and lowered their operating costs by 10% by moving into Tyler Elevator. And once they moved into Tyler Elevator, we announced a $25 million development of the first two buildings in that complex. Just this week, we signed a, a life sciences company to take the seventh floor. So again, you're going to see a lot more attraction around this Tyler Elevator complex. We're talking with Forest City about a research peninsula, biotech, pharmaceuticals. It'll be a five-building biotech campus on the Scranton Road Peninsula, which is right across the river from, the, um, from Tower City. We're also planning two to 300 homes in that Scranton Peninsula. So you could literally live, work, and play and do your research on Scranton Peninsula. And there's some discussions of a nanotech park in Midtown. And Midtown's very interesting because we have recently completed a Midtown study at the city of Cleveland about how to spur development in Midtown. Because once you see this Euclid Corridor project, and that's an enormous, complicated development along Euclid Avenue, but it connects the two largest economic hubs of the city. Downtown, downtown alone accounts for 65% of all the tax revenues for the city. And you've added in University Circle, you get 80% of all the tax revenues. But they're also geographically constrained. Downtown can only move one way. It can only move east. And the University Circle is, is geographically constrained. It can only move one way, and that's west. So Midtown has got to be the place. It's got to be the place. So we've actually designed, believe it or not, not only the Nanotech Park, but a digital film studio, a, uh, a technology learning lab, all within a three-block area in Midtown. And hopefully, we'll be announcing these things uh, publicly very, very soon. 
These bullet points are a little dated, but uh, we are now above the 400 square foot mark. I'm literally running out of Class A and Class B space in the downtown environment. We've created around, again, a little shade under 900 new jobs. We're up to $5 million in loan support for technology companies. And we've put out almost 300000 of grant, free money for technology companies to move downtown to help get you started. I mentioned earlier this new symposium of Cleveland Municipal School, Cuyahoga County, City of Cleveland, getting together and creating that new workforce for the 21st century. We're coming out of eighth grade, you'll have an IC3 certification. And coming out of high school, you'll have at least three of these eight to 10 certifications. So let's talk about the buzz. In fact, it's one of the best parts of my job is going around and speaking to people like yourself and spreading the gospel that things indeed can, and ha can in fact happen in Cleveland. A few years ago, we started the Women in Technology event. It was the first type of event, the first event of its type in the state of Ohio. Our goal was 50 attendees. We ended up with 315 RSVPs, 225 attendees. And it really was a defining moment for women in technology in the city of Cleveland. The CEO forum. If you're a CEO of a small company, our goal is to pair you up with a CEO of an old established company. And that's exactly what the CEO forum does. We take the emerging growth CEO, we pair him together with the old economy CEO with one rule. You can't ask him for money, but you can ask him for anything else. Go fly fishing, you know. Go see a game. Go walk through the park. I don't care, but get together and do something special. And as you see, the attendees are starting to grow in this particular forum. Midtown Brews, uh, which is in partnership with uh, iOpen, and we had a speaker from iOpen earlier today. Really, it's uh, toasting technology. If you're a technologist and you want us to talk for five or ten minutes, come in, have a few beers, talk a little shop, and enjoy the moment. Uh, Playhouse Square Party. Last year was the first year that we actually had a technology tent with the Playhouse Square Festival in downtown. We had 15 tech companies. Quick, interesting note, of the 32 companies we moved in, 15 have moved into, to, to, into, into Playhouse Square. So there's a unique environmental cluster, just this beautiful technology cluster beginning to develop in that square. Paradigm Magazine, not a lot of people know, we're one of the few regions in the United States to have its own technology magazine. This is with a partnership with uh, Great Lakes Publishing. We had 75,000 magazines circulated last, uh, last fall. I should have brought some boxes. I have like 1,000 left at my office in City Hall and passed them out today. But we're included in Cleveland Magazine Inside Business. Our next one will be in September of this year as a, as a positioning tool for the next slide, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And we're actually considering distributing the magazine in a national basis. Well, we're going to look at Boston, New York, Chicago, Austin, Denver, and San Francisco and put it into a poly bag with a Business 2.0 or a Fast Company magazine geared towards uh, the Cleveland expats, those who were born and raised here but have left, and now we've got a great venue for them to come back, and that is, how the hell does Cleveland have its own tech magazine? And we don't, and so hopefully they'll connect the two dots and come home. One of my favorite events is the uh, Tech Note event, and this is where we're pairing up technology with musicians, and we just kind of get together and we jam a little bit. There's nothing better than a sense of community, especially in the technology industries, and this is a way to do it. In fact, everyone's invited for the next one. It's uh, on May 10th at Annie Up Studios on East 36th, uh, where we'll actually be recording the jam sessions together and putting that up on the web. Uh, Defrag, which was launched in December of last year, this is bringing the digital community together in the Cleveland or Northeast Ohio environment. Last meeting was in Lorraine. I think the next one's in Youngstown. It's a quarterly meeting bringing together those who are involved in the di digital trades in the Northeast Ohio, linking networking resources and hopefully some funding as well. And finally, the best damn tech show period, which will be launching in November of this year, the 14th and 15th. And that is we have to make a declarative statement for us to be taken seriously at the national level. So we're going to have a trade show. And we're going to invite those 2,800 tech companies to come join us for those two days. And if you join us, we're going to give you Interviews with Cool Cleveland, with Cleveland.com. A lot of interesting technology layered on top of what we're trying to do here. And we're going to create a marketplace. So if you establish and you get the booth, we're going to bring in people who are looking for your services and technology skills in the marketplace. We do have a partnership with the Ingenuity Fest where we're going to co-market a little bit of these two shows. The day we were originally scheduled for July, but 
because the technology we wanted to impart into the show, we had to wait another six months to make sure it was tested. But this really could be a definitive moment for the city of Cleveland in the technology trades. I will put up my uh, contact information, and for the few of you in the audience who do know me, I, 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 they'll assure you, I do return phone calls, I do email people back, and I try and meet as many people as I possibly can. It may take me a few days, but I do, in fact, get back to everybody. Um, just to kind of give you a scope of what I'm handling currently at the city, on my plate right now, I have a billion and a half dollars of technology development in the city of Cleveland. A billion and a half. We're talking with 92 companies about moving into the city, and that's split between 75 and 25 percent. 75 percent locally, again, that, that, that black hole we've created, magnetized into the city of Cleveland, and 25 percent from outside the region. I mean, the word's getting out that you should take Cleveland seriously as your base of operations for technology. And I'll just throw off a little quick story. Toman Medical, it's a Switzerland-based company looking for a new U.S. corporate headquarters. They're in medical uh, dental devices. Chicago, New York, Boston, and Cleveland were the four cities that were considered. And historically, that's where we finish up the Quinella. We finish in fourth place, and we, you know, do a little clap. Hey, we tried. We actually scored this company. Beautifully designed uh, space down at Idea Center, 50 new employees in, and they're so impressed by what they've seen in Cleveland, Ohio, that now the Swiss uh, parent sends an executive over every year to live here in a one-year rotation. It's a great story. So please uh, call me, email me, be happy to meet, talk shop, and uh, I'm not sure if there's time for questions or not, but if there are, I'll take a few questions from the audience. Softballs, hardballs, curveballs? Yes? Blue balls. <laughs> How much is sustainability? Oh. Hi. How much is sustainability being considered when uh, planning all this tech wave? The uh, sustainability is a huge issue at City Hall right now. And in fact, um, in, in, with the abatements that are coming out for the uh, housing side, sustainability, green, uh, alternative fuels, I mean, they're all being considered to achieve the abatement. And certainly, if you look at Idea Center, that's a LEED certified uh, facility. Uh, the Cleveland Technology Center be LEED certified. E-Tech Catry is not only because it was already up and running. It was, a, it was an old ticket stand that we just kind of used. The mayor's plan, it, if you read it, it's definitive. I mean, sustainability is a key component of what the city is trying to achieve to the point where we actually have, I'm the tech czar, but we also have a sustainability czar, Andrew Watterson at the city. And Andrew and I are actually now working together to create economic development points of interest, one of which is alternative fuels. We've already brought in one alternative fuels company, and we're, we're talking with three more to come into the city of Cleveland, which eh, could be a nice little hub for alternative fuels. So, key issue. Any other questions? For, um, for uh, people that are local, how can we keep up to date on uh, some of the changes that are taking place? Because I consider myself fairly plugged into the Cleveland technology scene, involved a lot of business groups, and um, you know, I saw you speak a couple years ago at Neuter, but since then I really haven't heard much pop up and then come to this and see there's been a lot of stuff going on. So how can we kind of yeah. keep up to date on that so that, you know, we, we can be involved in this type of stuff? Well, that's a good question. You know, I, the local press you know, only gives so much, unfortunately, in terms of uh, promotion for the city. It's usually through grassroots, and that's the most effective way. I mean, I want you involved, so let's connect, and we'll find out the best way to get engaged and uh, work together. Uh, that's why we did the magazine, because we thought the magazine would be the best way for us to push out that regional message to people. And, uh, it's, and obviously, it's still, it's still not connecting with the right people, but we're going to keep on trying. Rick? Yeah. Monthly newsletter. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what I've, I've actually been asked to write, you know, blogs and a <laughs> weekly newsletter and things of that nature. Uh, there are days I don't even have time to breathe, much less write, you know. If I, I, it's, I, it is an issue, and I, and I, know, I know what I need to do. I also need to get better technology at the city, because I'm simply using for my email blast um, a saved Outlook file that I then keep on copying over. And so that's, uh, let me just say, you know, we've got all this on, on the plate in technology, and we never thought we'd get to this point in time. But I have a staff of three, me, myself, and I. And, and it's only until recently that the budget was approved for me to get two more people. I could keep five to seven full time going I mean, daily. I mean, it's really been that robust. The city understands that we have a severe problem in economic development in just terms of p 
personal human capital to make these things happen. I'll also say this about City Hall. I, I, I love working there, but we're not very PR savvy from, you know, from the top on down. Um, and that was a change. I mean, the Campbell administration had something called the 668 report, or 601 report, meaning the address of uh, City Hall. And that went out to 10,000 people every week about new, you know, the mayor's new initiatives. And we, we stopped the 601 report. Um, I've actually slowed down my emails a little bit. I mean, so that we, we, there's a process that we've got to control. But if we have any great ideas, I'm always willing to listen and, and do it. I am actually buying software to do the email blast a little bit more effectively. And one of the components of that is an email um, component. Yes, sir. <laughs> You've had so many good ideas, and that when the emails come, we get them in, and then we can or can't read them. And it would be helpful then if we could go back to a blog and see the things that you were talking about, and then differentiate where we were going to participate and where we weren't. You need a blog tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll start working on that post haste. You know, uh, uh, Cleveland.com actually has agreed to do a technology blog which I would be one of a number of writers, and, and that would be part of the best damn technology show, period. But it just, um, that won't be tonight, I'm afraid. That's, that's but like the Pope being your birth control expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll no comment on that one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I have one. Yes. Um, concerning, um, you, you know, of course you work for Cleveland and everything, yes. but have you been working or do you have contact with any other cities in the United States that have already either done design districts or they're basically in the planning stages? Mm -hmm. And do you have any comments or any suggestions for like other cities who might be, you know, wanting to pursue the same method that you guys have seemed to have, um, you know, come up with? Well, we've only talked with cities in the, in, in the state of Ohio uh, from a city like Warren, Ohio, which... Uh, as you know, Warren was heavily versed in the steel trades and the metal trades, and that, that, that town has been seriously gutted uh, because of that. And there was some contemplation of doing a huge data farm in, in Warren, Ohio, because you've got the infrastructure of the fiber pipes coming along the railroads, and again, you certainly got a lot of space. We've been working significantly with the city of Beechwood, believe it or not, in trying the two cities. I mean, there's a holy trinity of technology in Cuyahoga County, and that would be the city of Beechwood, the city of Cleveland, and Independence. And uh, I've had a little problems getting independence in line, but certainly the city of Beechwood, in fact, to the point where, I, I'll say this with, I'm so proud to say it, the city of Beechwood's actually subsidized the city of Cleveland's technology, economic development in a lot of ways, through our magazines, through our trade shows. So there's a city of, of a suburban site that um, I think woke up one day and said, all right, the city of Cleveland's got something going now, and they're moving in the right direction, and we need to help because it's better for the region. I wish every city was like that. Um, Outside of that, we, I, we, we have actually gone to New York. We've gone to London to talk with a few of the technology leaders in those two cities. Anything of magnitude or something I could say is going to change the city of Cleveland? Yeah, not, not, not right now. But we're going to keep on trying. There's one right down here. Um, okay. um, I was wondering, it's a little bit different than the other questions, but what is the city's plans as far as like um, bringing in, uh, I, I was noticing in the city record that there was an emergency ordinance put through to offer a 10-year contract for uh, uh, basically broadband wireless coverage for the entire city. Is the city also considering a municipal-owned network as opposed to uh, you know, corporate-owned? Yes, the goal like that? is that the city would have a, a municipal-owned wireless, and these are discussions that we've had in the past two years, and I can give you a quick history. In 2003, no, 2004, uh, Mayor Campbell met with uh, Intel, uh, one community, Cuyahoga County, um, and a few other key people to discuss the possibility of a municipal wireless network. And to us, it's a utility. I mean, it should be egalitarian. People should have access. And ha seeing how the city of Cleveland has one of the worst uh, connectivity uh, percentages in the United States, it's the best way for us to leapfrog that because, honestly, the SBCs and the AT&Ts of the world uh, almost outright refuse to go into the damn neighborhoods. It means it's, it's a crying shame. So what are we going to do? We, gotta, we have to build our own wireless, <coughs> muni wireless network to make sure that everyone has connectivity and to the point where we're actually considering how do we get the device in the home. 
how do we get the device to the kid in the school? So yes, uh, it was recently passed. Uh, Intel did work on the, uh, we hired Intel to uh, finish up the wireless plan for us. That's actually handled out of our, um, the office of the CTO. And uh, if anyone has uh, wireless applications or they want to even try to go for the RFP, I'd be happy to connect anybody to do that. But we will have one up very, very soon. Well, thanks, everybody, for your time. And uh, I really, any, any place that has a martini as a logo on the front of the, I'm there, man. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.